It doesn't matter how good your camera is, your composition or the location. If you're not processing your raw files effectively, then you're selling yourself short and you're not gonna be getting the best result. In this video, I wanna show you a powerful way to lead the eye through the frame, how to correct those tones and create a sense of three dimensionality in your raw files. Let's take a look. This beautiful canyon here, what drew me to this composition was obviously the waterfall, but these lovely cascades here and the linear perspective, that wide to narrow transition. What's the problem with this raw file? Well, I'll tell you now, it's the tonality is just back to front. The brightest tones are down here in the foreground and it's all dark in the background predominantly. Where's the eye gonna flow to? Down here. And that's not what I want. I want the opposite to happen. This is a very common scenario that you might get in your raw files. Now, if you look at the video footage, you'll see you don't really notice this in video. You do just get drawn to that waterfall. Being out in nature in person, we also get a bit of a tunnel vision where we just zone in on the main attraction, what's really catching our eye. And then in the peripherals, we don't really get caught up on all these little details. And that's the hard thing with photography is we've just got this single frame and there's more time for the viewer to analyze and get a little bit lost and led astray. So let me show you how I would approach this file and my way of getting around this problem and effectively transitioning the eye from foreground through to background. Not doing a full process on this one today, just a real quick one initially when it comes to the colors and things, I'll just adjust the profile to landscape and then I'm gonna run down and maybe just add a touch of vibrance and then going up to the temperature and tint, just cool it down a little bit. Now, if you wanna see more of my workflow for doing a start to finish, just check out the rest of the channel because I really wanna show you now how we lead the eye through the frame. Like I said, the problem is the foreground's too bright, we're too dark back here, and in nature, you'll notice that anything far off in the distance will have less contrast. The tonal range is decreased. Um, it's called the atmospheric perspective. Anything further away, the contrast and the darkness is a lot lighter. There's no such thing as black basically far off in the distance. When you look at this file here, we've got all these blacks up in the canyon underneath these rocks. We really want to make sure that that is lighter as well back there in that distance. So overall, I want to flip what's going on here. My main tool to do this, pretty much all my processing, is the adjustment brush, which you'll find in the masking section of ACR or Lightroom. I'm in ACR at the moment. Here it is here, K is the shortcut. And the way the brush works, how I like to use it, is a high feather. You see it has two circles there. If we have a low feather, it pretty much goes to one circle. And that means if we make an adjustment, it's a very hard brush stroke. If we have the feather higher and do the same thing, you see it, it gradually fades out. It looks a lot more natural. For that reason, you don't have to be too accurate with it. I'm gonna push K from now on to use the brush. I also like to leave the flow and density at 100, so when I click, it gives me a full application. Let's start on that foreground first and fo foremost. I'm gonna initially bring the exposure down. Now, the thing with exposure is you gotta keep in mind it's doing every tone. Every single tone down there is getting darker. Now, I don't want that too much because I love the white cascades. Um, I just want them to be dialed down a little bit. So one other thing you can do, I've done some exposure there, is try using contrast because that will drop the blacks down deeper but make the brights actually come up a little bit higher. So you'll see as we apply contrast, the whites are remaining relatively bright. They're not getting too lost essentially. So keep that in mind, high contrast in the foreground. Then we'll do the opposite in the background. Um, another thing you can do, I'm gonna push K just to do an, a new brush. I recommend you do multiple brushes. So if you change your mind or you wanna um, fine tune something, you can easily go back and do it. Um, consider using the D haze in the foreground. It's very similar to a mid-tone contrast. So we'll just do that now and go over and tweak it. See the darks are getting darker. Those brights are relatively bright still. So it's quite effective. Um, you can also, another one is jumping on the curves and do it manually. So dark mids getting a little bit darker and then you could lift those brights if you wanted to. We want tonal separation. I don't just want flat down in the foreground. I, I want a nice contrast, darks and lights. I just wanna make sure that it's not stealing the show. If we turn off all our brushwork so far, look at the difference that's made. We've still got the nice 
uh, cascades there, but it's just not stealing the attention. Now, how do we get the attention back to that waterfall? New brush this time. Let's begin by maybe increasing exposure slightly. And what I'm gonna do is just replicate some light back here. Exposure, doing all the tones. A little bit off to the edge because it is quite dark over there and through the center. And I'm just clicking away. You'll notice that I like to make the adjustment first and then brush. I just find that way more organic because you're watching in real time the result happen as opposed to opening a brush, painting the area like this and then going over and adjusting. I just find that backwards. I like to take a guess, apply, watch it happen and then adjust from there. Now on this brush, I'm going to get rid of this right hand wall because it, in regards to tones, it's a little bit bright. I'm going to bring down the exposure. Remember, we're trying to get the eye down to that waterfall. Think of how a vignette works, right? All right, dialing it back about there. Awesome. Now, let's start to get tonal separation back here. We've got all these beautiful greens, different moss colors. We've got the rock, but it's all looking quite flat. I'm using a brush and I'm gonna bring up the highlights and the whites. I really want to lift some of those greens back there and make the wall just not look so two-dimensional. Let's start to separate those tones. Hitting all the, the nice leaves up here as well. And I'll often do this, I'll start in one area and then if the brush is gentle enough, I'll just keep running it along. Like I said, I'm gonna undo there, Command Z. Uh, like I was saying, don't get too carried away in brushes, make sure you do multiple. So if you change your mind, you're not undoing absolutely everything. Now, let's start to press this waterfall in the canyon back to the distance by manipulating the dark tones. I'm gonna to bring up the shadows and the blacks, making them lighter. And now, particularly back here initially, let's make that look further away. Just by adjusting those dark tones, you'll see, see that? Pushing it off into the distance. I'm gonna do a new one, K. Okay. So it's shadows and blacks, a combination of either. Some of these trees up here too. So like I said, next time you're out in nature, have a look and you'll notice that anything off, far off in the distance, there's no black back there generally. It's gonna be quite faded, like a gray, a mauve, a blue. Even here, we can create the illusion of separation by having darker blacks on the front here of that rock and then less there. Transitioning the eye, layering it through. Another thing you can do, oh, I've got a new brush now, is rehaze. So get the dehaze and go to left. It kind of works on those mid-tones. By going left there, we're lightening them up gently. Just creating that illusion of depth as we run through the frame. See that? So I tweak it. Almost looks a little bit misty. And that's perfect on a scene like this. K for a new brush. This time some highlights, some whites, and just some of the moss here. Remember we darkened that down earlier with exposure, but we don't we don't want it to be flat. I'm just running that through all the way there. All right, now I'm gonna dial back these highlights on these rocks with this brush, bring darken him. I don't want those guys to be distracting. Now, beautiful green water back there. Whites can come up and we're just gonna hit that water like so. You ask yourself, where do I want the eye to go? Where do I want the eye to avoid? And that's how you know where to brighten and darken. Typically, you're gonna be pushing the eye through to the background. Generally, I'd compose something towards the centralized zone, not in the edges. Slight crop here just to tighten things up, like so. Let's do a before and after. That's where we were. So where's the eye go, right? To that foreground. There we are transitioning into the background. The left-hand corner here is quite dark, which is obviously effective, but maybe a little bit too dark. Like I said, not doing a full workflow, just giving you the tools and the concept here. Might even just create a bit more light source coming in from the top. Exposure can come up and rehaze is gonna be the trick. Using the edge of the brush, just 
bleed some light in. That's way too much, so we'll dial him back. Just pull it back a little bit. How about that? Um, if I was gonna continue processing this and really finish it off, I'd probably jump into the grading now. Maybe just apply some cooler tones. Oh yeah, like that. Subtle, but nice. Subtle, but effective. Um, and let's, I like to sometimes just zoom out a little bit, you know, you gotta let your eyes refresh. I'd never sit down and do a start to finish on an image. I like to look at it multiple times before I, you know, declare it complete. Look, closing your eyes, leaving the room, just letting it sit for a few days, highly recommend it. Uh, you know, that foreground there, I can, we could almost go a little bit heavier on the brush. Let's do just a touch more mid-tone contrast with those curves. Beautiful. Now, I don't want to, you gotta make sure your screen brightness is you know, not all the way, but not too dark either. Uh, that way you're getting some somewhat accurate tones which will translate to most devices and you know print as well. Just making sure these dark, extra dark values in there still have the detail in them, even up the top here like so. Uh, one other thing I might consider is globally just reducing the clarity. It's just getting rid of some of that luminance across the board, that, but not too much. All right, before and after. Oh, that's not really the best view. There we go, that gives you a good example there. What did we do? In short, what did we do to this image? We brightened and we darkened. We dodged and we burned. We're trying to lead the eye from the dark to the light, but putting the dark and light where we want it. Keep in mind this technique or this approach. Um, it's nothing groundbreaking, it's nothing new, um, but maybe you haven't thought about it that much. Use the adjustment brush to do it. It's very easy, very effective, very powerful tool to be using. Consider the dark values. It's just what a painter would do. Anything far off will have less tonal range. The, the darks are not as dark, the brights are not as bright. In the foreground, deeper tones, um, more contrast essentially. I'm not saying this photo is 100% complete. Uh, we'll save that for another day, but this really just gives you hopefully a bit of an insight into how to approach these types of scenes. And so you're not discouraged when you get home as well. Now, that's one of the things, we have that great amazing time in the field, and then you look at these RAWs and it's like, man, what's going on? Because the camera is doing the processing for you. That What you see on the back of the screen has been processed by your camera's um, settings, whatever they may be, the, the color profiles, etc. So it can always look good there. You get back here and I just know from experience, especially when I started out, it was like, oh, what? This is not how I remembered it. And then it can be a bit discouraging, but you can see how quickly you can just get some results get the ball rolling in the right direction and then you're pretty much majority of the way there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you might have picked up some tips here that you can apply moving forward. Please leave any questions below. I really appreciate it. Likes, comments and of course subscribing goes a long way. Check out the rest of the channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.